The Rails console is a powerful tool that lets us work with our models directly, without having to worry about the controllers and the views. The console is a command line application, so let's go to our command line so we can see it. Before we take a look at the console, I first want to remind you that Ruby has something called IRB, which is an interactive shell. And if we have Ruby installed, we should also have IRB installed. If we hit return, it'll put us into that interactive shell. And now we can input Ruby code, like one plus one, and it will return a value to us. It works a lot like a calculator. But in addition to just having numbers, we can also have other Ruby methods like hello, upcase, reverse. The Rails console works the same way. Type exit to get out of there. And now to enter the Rails console, you'll type Rails space console. You want to make sure that you are in the root of your Rails application, otherwise it won't work. There's a shorthand for it. Instead of typing out console, you can simply type Rails space C, just like we had Rails S for launching the server. Rails C will launch the console. When we hit return, it'll tell us that it's loading up our development environment. It'll tell us the version of Rails that we're using, and then we'll get a prompt. Notice that the prompt is very similar to what we just had with IRB. And that's because the Rails console is in fact IRB, but with your Rails application environment loaded into it. That's all it is. So we can still do things like one plus one, or hello, upcase, reverse. But we can also do things that are related to our application, like subject equals subject new. That's not something that's predefined for us in Ruby. It's part of our application. Our subject class from our models is being loaded so that we have access to it. Let's say subject name equals Kevin and subject name to retrieve that value. Now, as you will notice, this loaded up our development environment. We can load up a different environment by specifying Rails, console, and then the name of the environment. So for example, production. Of course, development is the default. Now, notice this is a little bit different way of specifying the environment than we had with migrations, where we had to put something like Rails env in front of it. We don't need to do that with the console. We just have to provide the name of the environment that we want. Now, tread carefully when you're working with your production environment. Just because it's the command line doesn't mean that it isn't using the exact same production database. So if you go into your console and you start changing things, you're going to discover that your production data is changing as well. The Rails console is a great way for you to work with models and to view your data. You don't need a web page to go in there and look at things. You can inspect things, try things out. It's a great way to test things and to do troubleshooting. We'll be using the console throughout the remainder of this chapter so that we can focus exclusively on how our models behave.